Marcus, you're getting home late yet again today. Just a second ago, I tried to give your office a call, but they told me that you had already left for the day. Where are you right now? I'm at the point now where I can't go on with you anymore. Huh? Tomorrow, I'm going to be handing in our divorce paperwork. So before then, can you sign it and help me hand it in? Actually, I've already spent a lot of the time filling it out, so can you just sign it and turn it in for me? You should have time to do that, right? What kind of a joke is this? Today isn't even April 1st, so you can't be trying to fool me, right? This is not a joke. I've come to realize that I just can't take being married to you anymore. Can't take it anymore? Are you seriously telling me that you feel that way? Huh? Right now? You can't take any more of me at this time? You are aware that in another month or so, I'm going to be having our baby, right? Aren't you ready to finally become a father like you always wanted? No. Huh? So you're really going to tell me that you want out of all of this right now? That's all really screwed up. What am I going to do if you divorce me? Where do you plan to go off to? I'm going to go off somewhere to where I'm happy. Yeah? And what is going to make you happy? I have someone that I actually love now. So I'm going to go to her and we're going to start our new romance together. When you say that, do you mean what I think you mean? Is this all happening with that one co-worker of yours? Huh? Why do you know about her? I felt that for a bit now you've been going out with another woman. You've always made yourself look a bit suspicious, and so I already had a feeling of what that entailed. What, you already suspected me of cheating on you? Well then, I didn't have to try that hard to hide her from you all that time then. <laughs> that is not what I want to hear from you right now. You have a wife at home that's been pregnant, and you choose to go out with another woman behind my back? That is beyond messed up, Marcus. So are you really going to leave me for her? Do you not feel any form of sorrow for doing that to me? I'm tired of having to be the one that has to go through all these hardships with you. I'm not trying to make your life any harder, Ella. You're just going to have to accept that things between us weren't working out and that you'll now have to raise that baby on your own. Good luck! I'm going to go live a life where I'm free, so you can manage that child without me while I go achieve that life. I'll at least give you the house and the divorce, so you should be happy for that. <laughs> This has always been my house, though, so of course I'm going to keep this place. I just cannot fathom that you want to throw me away at this bad of a timing. I will forgive you for cheating on me as long as you come back here and stay with me. What are we going to do to fix all of this? Uh, you can figure that one out yourself. <laughs> I no longer want anything to do with you. The way you say that, does it not break your heart whatsoever? What will happen if you have to pay a settlement for cheating on me, or have to pay for child support? I'm going to ignore you after this, so don't expect a dime from me. That will not go over well for you. I think you should stop all that nonsense and just come back to me and our baby. I don't like you anymore, Ella, and I couldn't care less about that baby as well. <laughs> Alright, good luck on your own. Make sure you have that divorce paperwork handed in by tomorrow. I want to hurry things up and get married as soon as possible to my new woman. You're the worst. I'm not going to let you run away from this so easily. How are things going with my house? Excuse me, but who am I speaking to? It's me? Me? There's no way you don't know who I am. So, can you tell me how my house is doing? Don't tell me that you've sold that place or anything like that, right? Your house? What are you talking about now? And another thing, why are you talking to me after 12 years have gone by? You were the one that threw me away back then, and you left with another woman from your work to get married. So having a message come from a jerk of a man 12 years later is shocking to me. I'm not your average man is all. Now, tell me how my house is? When you say your house, are you talking about the one that we lived together back when we were married? That's right, my house. That isn't your house, lol. And when you talk about that house, I'm still living in it. Huh? You're still living in my house? You're not supposed to be living in that house anymore! You get out of there right now! 
get out of my own house? What are you talking about? Even if you start to get pissed off with me and try to boss me around, I'm not going to be leaving this house. You still living in that house without my permission is the same dang thing as you trespassing on my property. Really? It looks like you might have hit your head on one too many things there, buddy. Do you need to go to the hospital or something? I knew you were pretty screwed in the head back when we were together, but I would have thought that after 12 years, that would have healed by now. Have you gotten to the point now where you can't even comprehend the words around you anymore or what you say? What happened 12 years ago doesn't matter anymore. Back then, things were tough for me. Things were not tough for you, but me, right? I mean, I was carrying our kid at the time, but you never seemed to care about it. It's been years now, so you'd think that asking how the kid is after so long, or some question similar to that would be normal, right? Well, it's not like you have to ask me that, because I won't tell you a thing about them. Alright now, hurry up and get out of my house! If you don't leave that place soon, I'll have to come there and force you out. Do you want me to become violent with you? Come on, calm down a bit there, lol. This is not your house. All you're doing is living there uninvited now. I'm going to live there again starting today, so you get out. Oh? Even though I don't believe you can live here anymore? Even after I moved out of there, you really thought it was okay to live there without me knowing? I guess I don't mind any of that, but today I'm moving back in with one of my lady friends, so get the hell out! Even though this house is under my name? What? From the start of us living here, my name has been on this house. So what do you mean this is yours? What made you think that this house was ever yours, Marcus? Lol. Your name is on that place? There's no way. Says the guy that left me for no good reason after us having a baby together and everything, and just vanishing for 12 years. And now after that long, you're back telling me a bunch of crap that doesn't make any sense. Are you sure you didn't hurt your head really badly? You really want to keep saying I'm crazy? That's very rude of you. I'm being honest. I'm not sure what it is with you that makes you think that you can boss me around, but this house is under my name. Shut up. I already know the truth. I know that house is my house. And right now, I need a house to live in. So I'm coming back to live in my house. Even though it's been over a decade since you threw me away, you're still the same old Marcus. This house is under my name and it always has, so you don't have any rights when it comes to what I do with my house. If you do try to get into my house, I'll have the police here in minutes. The police will only come to you if the house is owned by you. <laughs> but this is my house and you're the only one too delusional to agree on that. This all happened a while back now, so I'm sure you totally forgot about all of it. But if that's the case that you cannot remember, maybe you're better off just leaving me alone and moving on. Because if you try to move back into this house, you'll only be doing yourself more harm than good. I'm coming to get my house back whether you like it or not. Even though you think you can get away with stealing it from me. At this point, you are so confused that I might have to call the old folks home and have them come pick you up, lol. I think it's best you don't come around here. You'll only make yourself regret things more if you do. I really have no clue why after 12 years, you think you can come back here. But it's been far too long for you to be talking to me again when you have that woman of yours, right? If that coworker is still around, then you both should try buying or renting a house for yourselves like proper people. Well, that's only you have the funds to do so, right? Coworker? I don't remember anything about a co-worker. Oh? The woman I'm with now is a lady friend I met three months ago, and I'm starting to think about marrying her now. And she wants us to have a house together, so I was planning on giving her that house as a present. I can't be asked to buy any other place right now, so I want you out of my old house. Jesus, Marcus. Lol. You threw me out like that co-worker meant the world to you or something, yet you can't even remember who they are now? I suppose it's because of your poor memory that you can't even remember whose house this is. But I'll remind you that this is my house, so stop trying to get me out of it. And if you come to my house, you'll only make things worse, so stay the hell away. I 
already told you, right? You'd regret coming here. But you still couldn't trust my words and barge into here, and now you have to pay for it. You had to meet my husband without being invited. What the hell is going on? Tell me! Why the hell was a trap set up like that in the yard? I was just trying to get back to my house! What do you mean your husband? It's not strange for me to have found another man and marry him, right? It's been ten years now, and I've been married to my husband. What? Why didn't you tell me anything about that? Huh? Why should I have to tell my brain-dead ex-husband about my life? Lol. My daughter doesn't need to know about her screwed-up dad either. So that's why I made sure to never talk to you again, so that you never come back here. I don't understand how you got married again, but what is up with this trap? My husband is a bit of a protective man, and he works for a security company, so he decided to have some traps installed around the house to keep us safe. Lol. Huh? He, he works for a security company? Yeah, and we have a house with a young girl in it. So making sure that this house is secure from people like you is very important. And so, my husband made sure to put all kinds of traps. So of course someone that isn't supposed to be here would be caught in one of our traps, lol. Come get me out of here and let me go. This is my dang house after all. You're being a dick. This is the house that I put my name down on and paid for all the loans. You never wanted to be the one to take up the responsibility of owning that house, so I had to make sure this place didn't go under. You're an adult, but mentally, you don't have the fortitude to be able to keep up with any payments, right? And you're what now? In your 40s, right? I think it's time you calm down and think for a second, lol. And to calm down, I wanted to get my house back. I planned on bringing my super young girlfriend here so that her and I could have a nest to make babies in. I was changing my life for the better this time! You say that a lot, don't you? Yet every time you try to change your life around, you only fall even harder, lol. Now shut up! Go ahead and tell me what kind of amazing life you have right now. I'm sure you're in the same spot as me going through all these problems. I have been raising my daughter that you threw away 12 years ago all by myself. And now she is 12 years old. Huh? Uh, uh, right. She is around that age now, huh? And not just her anymore. But I have two more kids that I had with my husband, making it three now. That many? I raised three kids here with the help of my husband now, and still have a career outside of home. I think that I've been doing pretty dang well for myself after being thrown away by you, but... Can you at least give me back that house? This house is my family's house. But if you really want this house from me, why don't you come and buy it? Well, of course, that depends on your situation. But I'm sure by the way you've been acting, you don't have the money to, lol. Back when I left you for that other woman, I had gotten into some hairy business and lost a lot of my money. And since then, I've been having trouble finding any more work, and so my life has been really rough. But finally, after so long, I finally got a job as a full-time employee again and could start bringing in more dough. And along with that, I've got myself a really young chick. So you should be okay with giving me that house. Actually, before we get to that, come and let me out of this trap! I don't give a crap about all you just told me, lol. I don't care about what kind of troubles you've been through, or what jobs you have right now, nor about any girl you're with. You have no right to that house I own, so stop trying to get it from me. Also, if you wouldn't have come, none of that would have happened to you. But now that we have you, I'm gonna call the police and ask them what to do with you. Huh? What? The police? Of course. But I'm not doing well right now! I'm the one who's had a rough life ever since we got divorced, and so I'll have you sued for this! If you really want to do that, you're more than welcome to. But I don't think you'll be able to find yourself a lawyer that'll help you, and any case you make that's brought to court will be dropped immediately. Why do you say that? Do you not care about the harm you put me through? Um, that trap is only there to stop those that trespass. What? You're the one that broke through my fence and onto my property, right? So even if you're upset that you hurt yourself doing that, nobody's going to care about you, lol. I'll tell you right now, you screwed around and found out today. Are you kidding me? You're messed up in the head for making me go through this. Are you seriously that mad still about what happened 12 years ago? Well, immediately after what had happened, I was... But right now, I have three amazing kids with a loving husband, so I'm only happy. Because of you, I was able to leave you behind, and found that means to be a happy life. So, thank you, lol. What the hell? My life has been nothing but uphill battles. 
And that's all due to you being a selfish prick, right, lol? Now goodbye, you piece of garbage axe. I hope that you try better after you get out that trap to fix your life. I think the police will be here soon for you. Make sure to explain to them what happened so that they can help you to get your head checked out, lol. In the end, Marcus was taken into custody for trespassing and would be taken away in one of those police cars. And after all his hard work of getting that new job, the word of his arrest found its way there and he was fired by his manager. And that young girlfriend of his was disgusted by his actions and told him that they were through, which altogether ruined his mental health. He finally went back to his parents' house after almost 15 years and told them what had happened. And out of the kindness of their hearts, they got him a job at a really awful factory. And as of right now, he works from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day so that he can make as much money back to pay off all his debts, as well as pay his parents for allowing him back. I really don't understand why he went this far for something that was never even true, but I hope the consequences of his actions teach him that he got what was coming for him. Samantha, please give me some money. I'm all out of money right now. And look, my wedding is coming up, right? So right now, I'm in need of all the money I can get. Huh? Angie, you need money from me again? I just gave you $1,000 a couple of days ago, right? What did you end up spending all of that on in such a short amount of time? Do you really need all this money right now? Come on! You're my sister-in-law, you're going to question me now? You should know that being a newly married couple means spending lots of money. I have to pay to go out and get all my beauty treatments and stuff like that. Well, I understand the need to spend some money after marriage, but you have a job right now, correct? So you should be making your own money, right? Asking me over and over for money is becoming a touch... What? You're my sister-in-law, and that's why I'm okay asking you all the time. And when you got married to my brother, it cost you a lot of money for the wedding, right? So you know that the wedding is costing me a lot of money now. That's not the problem, though, here. When I was getting married to your brother and having that wedding, I made sure to pay for everything myself. And when I did start to run low on funds, I went and started saving money by not spending much on food and electricity and so on. But with you, Angie, I'm not sure you're trying that hard to save your money. Are you wanting to say that I'm just splurging over here then? I just want to make sure that my wedding is the best wedding people have seen in a long time. And I'm worried that I might not make that happen. I have to look my best on that day, and I'm worried that what I'm doing is not enough. All right, I understand how you feel. But that's not the case with you right now. I'm talking about how most people will save up a lot of money for times like getting married and such. But you seem to be asking for money more than you are saving it. So, in other words, you're saying that you don't want to pay for the wedding? And that you don't like the idea of giving me money? I never meant it like that, Angie. I just want you to know that I'm not your purse. But the problem is that you have been asking me a whole lot recently to hand you money whenever you feel you're getting low on funds. What's wrong with you? I never meant to use you like a purse. You just happen to have a lot of money, right? You saved up a lot and are also bringing in large paychecks every month. So you should have the money to help a poor little girl like me out, right? Well, Angie, the reason that I save so much money and make a lot of it is because I want it in case of emergencies. It's not all for me to give away to you, okay? I think it's time you start thinking about saving money more often and continuously for your future that might have kids and things like that. That's what I'm doing with myself right now. I want to be able to retire early in my life, so I've been saving up a lot of money now for that. Are you serious? But you're already 30 years old right now, right? Don't tell me you're thinking of kids or anything like that still. Do you even have the strength at your age to carry a baby? <laughs> I wouldn't say things like that if I were you. 
I have been saving up money my whole life, as well as made sure to find a good career where I bring in a decent amount of money from. And I plan to still think about things like kids as well now that I feel financially safe. And that's why, right now, I'm at that point where I might actually want to become a mother. Hmm, is that so? But if you give some of your money to younger people, you won't face any problems, right? Heck, you can give money to me like I'm your kid and I'll go ahead and have a baby for us. <laughs> that is not what any of this is about. And another thing, Angie, what's going on with you? Recently, you've become a bit too forward with your thoughts, and it's getting a bit out of hand. Is that what you think? Because I've been thinking the same thing about you, Samantha. Recently, you've become more of a selfish penny pincher around me. You have all that money, but you aren't willing to share it. Well, if you want money so badly, then why not get a side hustle? Then you can start to make even more money for yourself because I'm not going to be the one to keep handing you money left and right. I have to give up a lot of my time working to make money like I have been. Oh, please, I'm not the kind of person that does well with a job. <laughs> I'm already planning to become a housewife the moment we have our wedding. <laughs> so that's why I quit my job a little while back. Leaving that place to be a free woman? <laughs> it felt so good to become my own person again. What? You already quit? Don't you think that was a bit too early on your part? And right now you still have a lot of time left before you guys get married, right? So you should be using the time you have now to work your hardest and save up a lot. Samantha, you really love to talk about money, don't you? <laughs> Why, if one has time, should they have to use it to make and save money? <laughs> In my case, I'm going to be getting a lot of money with this marriage, so I don't have to worry about wasting my time working when I can rely on others for money. You're talking about relying on me right now. Well, you're one person that I rely on, but my fiancé is expected to be making bank in a few years more. So I think this marriage will be the turning point for me where I can cut ties with working. I'll be able to do whatever I want with no boss looking over my shoulders. What? Is your fiancé okay with you doing something like that? Of course he is. He said as long as I do the chores, he's okay with it. Then why aren't you asking him to give you money now? There shouldn't be a reason for you to ask me anymore, right? Well, about that, he might think I'm trying to leech off of him. <laughs> what? I haven't actually told him I quit my job yet. <laughs> I plan to make him believe that I'm the perfect woman before the day we tie our knot. Right now, he thinks I'm working all the time and saving up, and the day we marry, I want him to think I quit my job just for him. What the heck? Are you sure it's okay to be doing all of that right before your marriage? If you keep that up, he might find out later and you'll be screwed. Hiding things from him just so that he'll keep loving you isn't right. Huh? What's up with you now? Are you getting jealous of me? <laughs> Sucks to be you right now, huh? My brother has never had a lot of money, making you work all the time. But I guess that's on you for choosing to marry a man like him in the first place. <laughs> I like to work a job, so it has nothing to do with him. If he was making more than me right now even, I still wouldn't quit my job. I'm not that into being a housewife. I like to think that the money you want to spend has to come from the work you've put in. Oh, so you're one of those people. <laughs> Women like that end up getting cheated on by their husband at some point and have to deal with that in their old age as well as with all the health issues they get after. <laughs> I think you'd better have a kid soon so that my brother doesn't leave you. <laughs> I'm just going to assume you're saying that out of worry for me. But don't trouble yourself with that, because we do have kids on our mind at the moment. <laughs> you really try to be a strong woman. <laughs> well, whatever. You do what you want to do, because it has nothing to do with me. But anyway, make sure to put another thousand in my bank account, okay? Well, I'll text you again the next time I need some money. Wait, Angie! I told you I'm finished giving you money. Stop asking me for money. 
Hey, Seth, can you do something about your little sister? She's come back to me again asking for more money. But I've had enough of her and said no this time. What? She's at it again? I'm so sorry about her. She really has no clue what she's doing right now. I'll make sure to tell her again, but with a bit more seriousness this time. But what's worse is that she's told me she quit her job. And that's her reason for asking me all the time for money now. Don't you find all of this a bit strange now? I am not her eternal ATM, okay? What? She quit her job now too? I get that she wasn't making that much working there, and would come and ask me from time to time for money, but I think once she's married, all of this will be resolved. I'm sorry, but that girl has gone on with all of this long enough, Seth. Remember when we took a small vacation together and let her stay at our place? We came back to our house being a mess and a lot of our things missing because of her. I know that she has a lot of things wrong with her in her head. I just didn't think she would go this far. It's because while we were out of the house, she saw my checkbook and saw how much money I was making. That's when she started asking me for money as well. But what I learned today is that her fiancé apparently has a lot of money as well. So I really hope that you're right about saying that after her marriage, this should all be resolved. That's just a hope of mine, though. You don't have to give her any more money, okay? Yeah, I'm sure it won't be. For a little while, I thought she was a nice person to deal with, but recently she's gone too far and I'm not having it. She really thinks that acting as rude as she has been is acceptable at her age for some reason. I could see that. If we really have to, we can always cut ties with her after her wedding. Ah, and now that I think about it, I want to change the subject. Did you see we got a message saying that we are allowed to take out that loan on a new house? What? Get out of here! I never saw any message about that! Perfect! Now we can move out of this place! Absolutely! And about moving into a new house, to avoid having Angie come over at all when we're away, let's just keep our address a secret from her. How does that sound? Actually, I was thinking the same thing. Let's move out of here without telling anyone. Alright. Well then, let's end our rental agreement on this place once her wedding is over. And then we can get out of here. Alright, that sounds great. Uh, Samantha? Can you make sure to bring me $30,000 as my wedding gift today? If you can make that happen, then I'll never ask you for any more money. I'll allow this payment to be your way of celebrating my big day. What are you talking about? 30000 is not an amount anyone would give on your wedding day. But I'm your sister-in-law, and it's normal for you to want to give me a large amount, right? If you don't end up bringing me that 30000 then I'm afraid you won't be allowed to attend my wedding. <laughs> hmm? I'm telling you that the 30000 is not only a gift for me, but an entrance fee as well now. <laughs> And it would be terrible if the family saw that you never showed up to my wedding. They might think of you as a stingy and selfish sister who doesn't care about us. Oh, understood, Angie. So that's what you think of me being your sister-in-law? That's right! As long as you give me that last bit of that money, I'll no longer bug you anymore. I'll even consider you my real sister if you can give me that money. So I'm looking forward to that money getting to me. Then, I'd like for you to pay me $60,000 for your wedding. Huh? What are you talking about? You haven't heard yet? I planned on paying for this whole wedding for you. I had worked for the group that put together this wedding before, and so I got a discount through them to give you this wedding. I was totally fine doing that for you because I believed you were like a cute little sister to me. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. The ones paying for this wedding should be my parents and my brother, right? Well, at first, that's what they'd all been saying. But then things turned into only your brother and I having to pay. Because your parents were kind enough to pay for part of my wedding back in the day. I didn't want to make them pay for yet another wedding again, so I told them that just Seth and I would pay, half and half. Huh? Are you kidding me? If I'm to stay away from your wedding, though, I won't be able to get that discount for the wedding. And the full price will have to be paid. 
And after taking a look at the original cost, it'd be $60,000. And that would need to be paid by you. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> You're lying. Wait. I never heard a thing about this. If I'd known that, I would have been a little nicer to you. You shouldn't have had to know about that to be nice to me, though. I've already given you a ton of money as it is. If you're not even going to be nice to me because of that, then I don't care about how you act with me now because I'm sick of you. <laughs> if you really want to be nice to me now, give me back my money and pay for the wedding. <laughs> All right, hold on a sec. And now that I think about it, it's all right for you to come to my wedding. I won't make you pay that 30,000 anymore now. I don't need it anyway, so just pay for the wedding and I'll be set. I'm not paying for it now. <laughs> I don't have the money anymore to be paying for a rotten girl like you. You would never be able to pay for a wedding like the one I put together for you anyway, so at the very least, you should be saying thank you for that first. All right, I'm sorry. Just come to my wedding now and make sure to pay for it. No. <laughs> I'm planning on explaining all of this to your family right now as well. And then I'll head back home and enjoy my day off work. <laughs> ah, and Seth is with me right now, and he says he'll be coming home with me as well. <laughs> if you're going to do that, then I'll come to you right now. I'll come to your house and start screaming at the top of my lungs and make all sorts of noise to make you guys pay. If you don't want me to embarrass you guys in front of all your neighbors, then shut up about going home and come pay for my wedding. <laughs> We've already moved into a new house. So the place you knew about isn't where we're living anymore. So you can go there and make all the noise you want, but you'll most likely be taken away by the police. <laughs> huh? What? That's definitely a lie, right? I'm not lying, Angie. I told you, I plan to go to the next phase of my life and hope to become a mother. So we've bought a house and we'll start to work on making babies and having a fun little family here. And since you'd be getting in the way of that, we're cutting ties with you. <laughs> Wait, I get it now. I'll apologize to you for real now, so come back here. I really do not want my wedding to fall apart now. Well, for me, that's kind of what I want to happen to your wedding. <laughs> and it's too late now to cry and scream about it. You really should have hidden those rotten intentions from me a little bit longer, right? <laughs> but I think a rotten girl like you having her wedding fall apart around her and going to hell is a perfect ending. <laughs> After that, Angie continued to cry to Samantha, asking her to pay for her wedding and everything. But Samantha made it clear she wasn't paying anymore and proceeded to block Angie's number. This then led to Angie's fiancé losing faith in his bride after the news spread, and the wedding was finally brought to an end. Angie ended up having to pay for all the cancellation fees for her wedding, and her getting to marry her fiancé was also long gone. Right now, it seems as though Angie is living the worst time of her life. But as someone who could never thank anyone for the money she constantly took from them, her having to go through this kind of hell is only natural.